Execration versus Newbie. Game number two is now underway. Newbie taking game number one, looking good for their group stage placing so far. Execration would love to be able to tie a team like Newbie. They've already tied Virtus Pro, which is respectable as hell. If they could actually tie another top tier team, it would help secure them in that, uh, at least out of that elimination area. A little bit better, I feel. Uh, we're gonna go into game number two, it seems, with a uh, first big sanking. Again. I don't think that Newbie's mentality on this hero has changed in a very long time. It really hasn't. They've prioritized this thing since, like, what, DAC? Yeah. They... Maybe even before DAC, now that I think about it. I'm not sure, but that's when I really started to notice, like, their their liking of the hero. Like, they, they pick it, they favor it super highly. It can fulfill a ton of different roles, great in team fights. It can split push. Like, the, the hero is just... He's top tier. He's one of the rare supports that can very quickly transition into that Blink Dagger core, right? Yeah. I would say, like, watching some of the Earthshaker supports, what some of the pros have done, their timing is very impressive, but it still won't even come close to matching what the Sanky does, simply because he's able to just be able to push out waves. Like, he can, once he gets to level eight or nine, you know, he's got that maxed out Caustic with Burrow, he instantly kills a creep wave. You know, that's such, such value. And not just the farming, but the lane pressure that it puts on the enemy. And if you add on top that you get a blink deck or maybe get a Yule Scepter, Force Staff, all that sort of thing, you're really hard to actually catch. So you get this support hero that's able to rapidly push out waves. It's really hard to catch. And even if you do, it's still a support hero at the end of the day. Yeah, the, the, he just brings a ton to the table. Flexibility, farm capability, team, everything. It's like they have, you have like this checklist. And it's like yeah. every hero fills like one or two boxes. Sanking feels like four or five. So when you have a hero like that, kind of just warrants first phasing, especially if... Uh, but Shadow Shaman to follow this up. Uh, I would say a pretty standard support pairing. You know, you see either... You see one melee strength hero typically, and then one hero who kind of maybe gets a little bit less far in like a position five. So, you know, your Night Stalkers and stuff like that would be your fours with your Sanking for... It. Sometimes Clockwork too, which is banned out this game. And then you got like your Rubik's, your Shadow Shamans, your Dazzles, all the other heroes that sit in lane and, and soak. So that, that combination coming out here from Newbie already. Execration going with the Nyx Shaker. A little bit less conventional. I'm guessing it's probably just going to support Nyx in this case. Yeah, they. I think that's their like favorite support. It's being able to run support Nyxes. Seems quite good for them. It was in that game versus maybe Hellraisers or, or maybe the Virtus Pro game. They had a really good Nixus. Ten seconds remaining. The Earthshaker taking away from Five KP. I think that feels pretty good. Earthshaker is, in my opinion, the highest value offlaner right now. It seems like he's being kind of contested by Void a bit. Um, I've seen a number of Void first picks, uh, but only in certain oh, matchups. So you still favor Shaker that highly even after they fix the pulling? Yes, yes I do. Um, I, I think you're still one of the best off laners to find farm. Kind of no matter the situation, you're always going to get your blink deck. Or like I think the roughest games that you can have, the ladies will get you. Yeah, right? that's and, true. That, and it's such a huge power spike being able to have that much lockdown. Right, it's like five seconds plus of lockdown on one hero. Plus, it's a combination of physical and magic damage. I think the fact that Enchant Totem has been buffed so many times and you have the talents to back it up means it, it adds so much more to Earthshaker's damage, right? It's not just magic damage, heavy source of physical. Plus it has True Strike. So those yeah. teams that like to pick random stuff like PA or, you know, Wind Rangers every now and then. Even just the Halberds and Solar Crests yeah, and yeah. stuff. Uh, it's or the Tinkers, I love it. Nothing makes me <laughs> happier than getting, being Earthshaker and the guy lasers me and I'm just like, I don't care. Yeah. Nothing You'd be stops my surprised time. how many people forget that enchant totem yep. goes. It has true strike. It's probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Just watching, you know, the high level pubs. There was a game where someone was playing Wind Ranger with Shaker on the other team, and the Wind Ranger just pops Wind Run and Focus Fires a Shaker and just walks up and chances one shots him because he just forgets. He's like, whoops, <laughs> true strike, JK. I think he's got one of the best talent pools in Dota as well. It is really good. Yeah, he's got plus ten strength. 
Uh, I think it was that first one. It used to be plus yep. seven. I it's think it's ten it. strength and mana, like two fifty, and then the next one is twenty plus fifty damage. Twenty movement speed or fifty damage. Which uh, I think the damage with Enchant Totem is insane. Yeah. Though I've seen a yeah. couple of rare instances where pros have had gone. Uh, Support Shaker, right? Gets the movement speed. And yeah, yeah offline typically so. gets damage. And then the the level twenty is plus echo damage, which is nice, better initiation damage, or a big increase in your fission range. And then the final one is Enchant Totem uh, minus two second cooldown, which is huge. It actually changes the way you can do your combination, especially if you get off to the super late game. I don't remember what the other one is on. It's, it's health, I think. Health, yeah, just raw right. health. It's yeah. like seven hundred or something. Maybe it's limited six hundred. Is Tusk seven hundred sounds like a crap ton. No, I think I think Tusk gets seven hundred, and yeah. Earthshaker gets like. 600 or it's a lot i bet it's 500. you Let's think it's see. five i think it's six i can i can look it up well we'll, we'll find out as soon as we our actual game silencer being picked up against sand king and shadow shaman i'm down with that that is uh two heroes that do some channeling i like the silencer because in the last game it showed that newbie were just the superior team fighter like they they came in and they knew exactly what their their priority targets were and they just knew like Kaka and KP were sitting outside of the fights waiting for the black holes everything just seemed to work so when you have a silencer he like he just stops everything he's like I throw out a global mm -hmm. everyone who wants to do something you can't anymore and we can have our own form of initiation and we can get the fight going our way we can get our own momentum and kind of take the fight that way so I do like the hero quite a bit when you want to fight people but you feel like to a certain degree they just maybe either have the better positioning or the coordination advantage Legion Commander. I love that hero. Why not, do you love that hero here? Not in the jungle, but I love that. <laughs> um, I think that it's very hard to punish Legion in lane. You already have shown that one of your supports is going to be a Nyx. Yeah. So if you're looking for just a really solid hero to walk to a lane and just pretty much be unkillable, Legion is fantastic. You know, you get your poor man shield, you get a little bit of regen, you get a stick. The hero just against these types of supports typically doesn't have to go back that much. Looks like Execration, though, they want to secure their safe lane. They, they take themselves the Ursa. And in response, Newbie just immediately like in which I would say against, you know, if you if we ignore the Ursa, it's pretty good against the rest of their heroes. Yeah. And, and, and I would argue Lycan's even good versus Ursa simply because he offers such a large amount of ability. Yeah, you may not be able to fight him head on, but you do have, like, the Necronomicon build, for example, where you, you don't even have to... Right, right, you just run around. You just don't let him hit you. You hit, hit you kill, all the like, other heroes. Yeah, the Silencer, the Nyx, the, the Shaker, oh, if you have BKB, are all pretty easy kills for you. Death Prophet going to be the final ban here from Execration. I think that makes a uh, good amount of sense. Like, in between the Howl as well as the Legion Commander buff up, they actually do have a lot of ways to protect the Shadow Shaman, even if they lack a death of support. Uh, while Sven is going to be the ban by Newbie. I guess that is one of the last remaining trump carry cards you know it's the final like oh well i beat you like game Ooh. it's a little bit different than i was expecting i mean i guess you can't really go back for something like dk because then you're looking at what quad melee against a shaker <laughs> that doesn't really seem that nice and in ursa yeah, yeah that maybe because Marauder's is probably the best kiting core in, that is popular right now yeah, I think so. I think the issue is like because they opened up Nyx, right? You don't want to pick like even though they second phase banned the the puck and the queen themselves, it's because they're playing against Nyx. So they don't want to pick the hero because right. Nyx destroys them. So they're like, okay, we'll get rid of all these really annoying mids. We might pick something that's not a top tier, but like you said, can get around team fights, still offers a good amount of burst damage, can wave clear too, which I would say, you know, minus the Sang King. They don't really have the greatest wave clear. Well, uh, I'm down with Lena against Leech Commander and Marana. Oh god, yeah. Lena is gonna feel pretty good in that 1v1. As Triple C. Marana does not have very good base damage. She has good attack range, but she hits like a kitten. It's like 50, or her starting damage is like 44 or some terrible number. I think newbie won already. I mean, just looking at this draft phase. Uh, <laughs> Legion Commander is such a cooler hero to be in the middle. <laughs> you see her, she's like doing this stand. She's like, come on, you know, come at me sort of thing. So I was just standing there. I mean, boring. He He's a silencer. Of course he's boring. Shout out to James. The third pick hero is actually the most important in the draft for cool factor. That is very true. I think team's got to start thinking about that a little bit more. 
execration are clearly behind in their pick metal. You have like your, your Power Ranger stance or whatever. You mm -hmm. got your five people lined up. Yeah, you got to make sure whoever whoever's taking that third pick hero has has to have an Arcana. So, yeah, like your Legions, your Invokers, stuff like that. Got to look fancy. Yeah. Execration going to start things off with an early smoke out to place wards. Newbie, are they going to go for uh, a smoke like last time? They actually don't have any smoke. That's a bit of a surprise. That is a very big surprise, seeing as everyone likes to be able to run Has out anyone and pulling smoke contest. No, no one's pulling money. Because sometimes they'll, like, wait a tiny bit and have, you know, 190 or some odd gold left, and they'll yeah. just buy a smoke after. But So Lumic is going to get down some pretty aggressive wards without being detected. This one block away the, uh, the easy cam pull, which... I think was was something that nobody really cared about in uh, the previous patch because neutrals got kind of hurt quite a bit, so yeah. supports pulling wasn't as valued. But then they actually buffed up specifically the easy can. So it was I like what ten percent, fifteen percent, something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's okay. not a huge number, but Dota is. I mean, oh. wasn't it twenty percent nerf when they hit neutrals? Uh, so it kind of almost rectified that. Yeah, it's it's close. It's definitely close, but either way, nowadays it feels like if you're playing these Shadow Shamans and stuff and you're not against a solo offlane, if you can't pull, it just feels bad. Yeah. You know? You're just not really getting anything. So we're gonna have an Ursa plus some supports, I'm sure, versus a Legion Commander and Sand King. Actually sounds pretty rough considering their supports, and that's why I I really like the Legion Commander. You already knew most likely the supports. It was it was pretty unlikely that a third pick silencer was gonna uh, turn out to be a surprise core pick, right? So you already knew silencer Nyx assassin as your two supports. That sounds weak as hell. So no matter what the core actually was, and then they didn't know yet, you know, Legion Commander is gonna do fine. Even Ursa, who is supposed to be pretty good versus the Legion Commander, it's obviously one of the heroes you just can't man fight. When you throw the Zanking down here, this is actually a one v two that Nando certainly can't win. See him uh, run himself away, but he's going to be stalled up by the Burrow Strike, and they're just going to get a lot of damage on him. Not going to kill him, unless they really want to go deep, deep dive. They are going to be able to put some pressure on him. Meanwhile, top lane looks like a block off. Raging Potato brings Faith pretty low. Faith. They're shocked. They are going to start bringing the, uh, at least one support back down to Bob and Yersa, because he's going to need it. And this lane is already really tough. Like, Nando doesn't have a salve on him. He's sitting around half HP. RR is going to do what he can, but realistically, both of these heroes on newbie have boots. So if he's out of position, too, he can get chunked real hard. Even if this becomes, like, say they bring the Nyx's ass in here, I think a Sand King, you could even just start the Caustic Finale with the Creep Wave. And they can't really fight you. He doesn't have to hit two first, but yeah, it's a, a definite possibility. But they're still not doing it. They're, they're keeping Lumic here at the top lane. I think it's just a Shadow Shaman effect. Yeah, that's... I think you can't leave that hero in a 1v2. Because Shadow Shaman, who's allowed to get, you know, uncontested pulls, get to 6, you know, control the lane and stuff, that's that's much worse, I think, of a scenario for maybe uh, the way x are thinking about the game, because then you lose your offlane tower so fast, or maybe, you know, he even goes mid, takes your mid tower, that could be even worse. Right. So I think that it's still okay that Lumic kind of hangs around. Trying to control the rune. Well, Lina's doing quite well for himself. Uh, 15 and 5 compared to 8 and 3, especially as SCC is going to be uh, kept away from his mid push. He actually just lost out on, I think, a full creep wave just to... Yeah, but that's the kind of benefit that you get when you're not doing that defensive try lane. You know, if you just have turns, you force some kind of reaction on the uh, mid player, he loses out on mid. You know, you already have the advantage mid, too. So if you have all the supports accounted for, because finale actually slowing Nando down, so he can't keep chasing KP. Now KP is going to give a lot of damage. To they might be able to kill him here. They're going to go for it. Bro strike up. He's holding on to it. Actually, oh. stun up the Ursa. That is a beautiful play. He didn't just mindlessly go. Oh, I've been hit by the last lord. Let me just make sure that we kill the silencer mid. Holy CC barely survives. That is a hell play right there. That's what saved him. He had a fair fire as well, so yeah, he, he just put a lot of faith in his teammate. Well, not that teammate. Yeah. This is a really rough matchup, though, for 
Murana. We were kind of talking about it during the draft, and I think it's one of those picks where you don't really care if you win the lane. You just want the hero for what it offers during the, the mid late game stages. This is going to be uh, diffusively. At least that, that's how I was thinking about it against um, Ursa, but. I don't. See, this is the, the thing, right? Like, a lot of the time when I see mid Murana, I always just assume that they want to buy Aghanims because it just increases your farming capability so much. And it makes you super tanky because against Lina and Shaker, you kind of want some amount of raw health. But then again, you're playing against Nick. So if he carapaces you randomly, that can also feel great. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually just curious as to what path he's going to take. RR is dead again. The caustic finale, people are like, oh, the nerf, it hurts Sand King so hard. I really don't think so. Sand King, the, the farming Sand King of offlane, it's not really a thing. It's mostly support. And the caustic finale still has so much value because as a four position, you're moving around the jungle a lot. You run into another support, the caustic finale allows you to chase that hero. You're infinitely, you can always have that slow three seconds after you, uh, after you pick them. Faith Off is going to be caught top lane. Don't have a stun to finish him, but they do have the enchant totem and the extra movement speed. So Shadow Shaman's slow, slow ass is gonna be beat on by Raging Potato. Now they'll be able to get the first kill for execution. Faith has literally no items. He had his inventory was completely empty, and he just bought a teleport when he uh, revived. So he'll be coming back to lane with with exactly no items. What? Wow. Me? Wow. I mean, I can understand that in some ways. It's like. Regen doesn't really matter. It's me getting my boots that matters for survival. Right, right. So it's just surprising. Like if I was in that position, I'd be like, okay, I guess I'm using my gold. Let me buy a Tango and a Clarity. Not Fate. He it's because he's. Picture, picture. I, I think he's stacking a lot, so he's not actually killing the creeps. It's more like he's denying the wave when he pulls. Yeah. So he, he's not benefiting from pull camp itself. He's just trying to do it to control. And I'm sure he hasn't gotten any of the bounty runes either, just because yeah, he's facing a dual lane that probably contested every single one. Limix just hanging around. Even though he's only level four. Jeez, these guys are so fast. Look at him. Two man burrow strike. That's a great setup, especially since Lumic was TPing to turn and fight this. Still managed to get away a decent amount. Uh, KP is super fast with his phase boots. Nice, nice stun from him. Survive. Damage on to Kaka. He does have that. He needs to be careful. Away. Stick him out. That overwhelming out is gonna do a lot. It is gonna do a lot. Nando's barely gonna be able to escape 35 HP. Uh, they didn't have any vision. I think if there was a ward down anywhere bottom for newbie, that KP would have just manned up and killed him. Because that overwhelming odds hits heroes way harder than he used to. They really gotta be careful in testing, especially against this now. We saw how the Lita dropped quite low in mid lane, bottom lane engagement, especially with the nighttime. Hal can always turn things. Raging Potato is going to have to find a lot of Aftershock stuns and the TPs to survive through this. Okay. Pops the shape shift, and uh, they actually cancel the TP onto the Lina. Mookie comes back for more, trying to play the Enchant Totem, does manage to stun him, hits Faith to be able to stop the follow up disable. And now that Shape Shift is gone with the TPs, they might be able to punish this one. Nice stun from Raging Potato. Turns, goes for Faith, managed to help pick up that kill, and now RR is here to clean up Mookie. Let's see if he can do enough damage though, because it's going to be close. He pops the Howl to get the bit extra, and I don't think there's any way for RR, who doesn't even have boots, keep up and finish this hero off. Meanwhile, mid lane, Kaka has made the rotation over and they pop James with the help of Faith. Both SCC and Kaka got dangerously low, but uh, I didn't really see it, but I'm presuming that how that the uh, light can use probably helped out that. Now, that was really unfortunate for the Shaker. Like, he went in for the kill, I think assuming that the totem was going to one-shot, and it didn't, so he had to throw like an additional auto out, and I think that's why he is dying there. Maybe it... You know, he wants to just buy time, he walks to the left, they, they could have lived, but there's no guarantee that he would have gotten the kill on the Shadow Shaman either. So a trade, and you know, it's not like Raging Potato is doing bad or anything, he's still no. level 6. And you know, he's got a good amount of CS. It's actually second highest on his team. We've got three heroes all kind of neck. Or Shaker. Legion Commander all sitting in the 2700 area. Nice stun from Lubick. He, he is just on a roll here with these impales. Now, they do have the Moonlight Shadow, and that is going to be able to save. In fact, it's probably going to result in a death here on Rage of Potato. He's going to wait for it. He throws down the Echo Slam. No duel from KP. He actually didn't have the mana for it. And uh, Rage of Potato was too tanky anyway with the Strength Dread. 
Missing out on that stun. The arrow also misses. Raven Potato turns around, goes for the Echo oh. Slam. Stun on a fate, but it's not enough again! He barely misses out on the kill. Misses it entirely. And it results in his death. Lumic is now going to be chased down to the Shrine area. The Shrine's not up, so Lumic gets the stun onto SCC. KP doesn't have anything, but it looks like just the right clicks from SDC will be enough. Picks up the double kill. That has to feel so bad. James? Oh, never mind. Raindrop is there. That was like, you look at that moment, you're like, man, if I was level seven, yeah, you know, that that would have been a kill easily. Maybe he even lives. He even had the the higher damage build with the one two two, and it still wasn't enough. Well, Major Potato's doing a great job, which is barely not enough. He's creating a ton of space as well. Yeah. Like it's it's opening up bottom quite a bit. We saw that KP had to leave bottom, giving Nando a little bit of breathing room. I'd say even though he has pretty good CS, his lane wasn't really that easy. Kaka gonna find RR here again. Chase him down. Sure not. Far. But RR is kind of stuck. He also. It's actually I say also, but Faith is actually racking up the RR is the, uh, the one city at 400 net worth. That, times. that is tough. That's a tough game right there. He does have enough for boots now. He just picks him up. I think at some point, even if you're playing a five roll, you kind of need to prioritize boots because then you just, you know, you become this liability and you just keep dying, keep dying, keep dying. Can't ever really get yourself back in. Caught Faith. Looks like uh, he was trying to lay down some wards. Gets some behind the tower, but he dies in the process, and I'm sure execration. Throw down some sentries, see if they actually aggressive wards. Because he got a lot of them. He got this super aggressive ward, and then they got the ward behind the tower as well. And there's still this leftover one in mid lane. So, so much vision in the off lane jungle area. There's a kill lead for newbie here, but it's not like a 2k net worth lead at 10 minutes isn't really cool. Haven't seen a lot of towers drop yet for the, either teams. Kaka takes quite a few hits to the face there. Kaka's just kind of fearless. Trying to do a little bit like sandwiching on Nando. Maybe with the like and it's possible, but considering how much damage they've already taken, it's going to be close. Nando, they're going to go for him now. Managed to get the duel before the enrage. The three-man wow. stun helps out a lot, but it's still not enough to save Nando for the duel. KP wins it. Lumic is going to go for a spike in the face. Team out. Smart play. Newbie are still going to kill the core, and they're still going to take the tower. Shackle on top lane into an arrow, maybe? Yes, yeah, Potato. He is tanky as hell, but they do have a regen rune for SCC, which means he has the new job. So a lot of movement coming in here from both teams. Looks like, uh, once again, though, Nubi seeming to get just the, the bigger advantage out of their engagements. They're able to claim the tier one in the safe lane, getting some good chip damage on top. This time, though, Execration will react. Now, they do manage to kill uh, Kaka in the mid lane. Looks like James putting all that pressure on the tower does manage to close the same game. I'm not sure what that was. Did he, did he just keep the in? I guess so. I, I didn't see it either. I was looking yeah. at top lane. Alright, great potato. They desperately need his blink dagger because uh, I think that's the biggest thing that's lacking right now is that newbie have like this constant pressure that is always in your face. What execration desperately need is like hard initiation that allows the Ursa to beat on something. Because he's just getting kited around in a lot of these fights. In fact, he may just die here. They're looking for the chain stun just like they got in the bottom lane with the duel. Moonlight Shadow, they're gonna be able to get it with the shackles. SCC, especially if it's can, not in a position for an arrow though, wouldn't have even been worth it. 0.1 second stun, so leaps away. Down on. It's been a a really weird kind of phase where Marana was picked a lot and then she wasn't picked at all, and now she's like kind of coming back again. I know that EG, for example, like to run this hero every now and then. I, I just always am really curious as to, besides just mobility factor and the ability to like arrow somebody having the Star Storm from Rift player, what the real pull is for Marana. Is it just a lane shadow? Is that like, is the free quote unquote smoke why everyone likes that hero so much again? I think people are kind of realizing that the um, the physical damage Marana is kind of back. 
because okay. the, the talents are so good for it. I don't think the first talent is so good. Yeah, you just tank up a little bit, but all the other talents are good. 30 attack speed plus 50 damage, and then you get maybe the 100 attack speed. Attack speed. Bottom lane, Rage Potato's dead. You just cannot catch a great wolf. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're... They, they're kind of reading the same thing, right? It's like, as long as they keep this Blink Dagger down, the execution really can't fight us very well. And if they can't fight us, they're going to lose all their towers. I think a lot of it has to do with the discrepancy and how much the supports can do. Like, Shadow Shaman Sand King just sounds and feels a lot better than Silence. Nick Silence, right? Especially pre level 6, because they have not had a fun laning phase. Silencer just offers so little kill potential. I think they were hoping that the Ursa would kind of circumvent that problem by just being such a strong laner against what they might have assumed was just going to be a Legion, but because they also sent Kaka bottom on the side of Newbie, the lane just was, it was pressured all the time. Like Nando, he's behind net worth right now by almost a thousand to KP. So normally you pick this hero and you say, ha, lane counter. And then another hero walks to the lane that you maybe are not expecting, or maybe you think you can do better against, and you go, oh wait, okay, this lane actually isn't that good. We're not going to really e be able to easily secure Roshan either, because we only really won mid. Top lost, I would say that the amount of like contest that was going on in bottom probably means they lost that lane as well. Yeah. So it's, it's looking a little bit rough at the moment, but like you said, Raging Potato getting closer to Blink. Smoke up from Newbie, though. Or are they going to head? Start going up to top lane, but I'm sure they're going to go for it so certain on this since they have the vision there already. Oh god, yeah, th this is like bull wrap round. Lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, they're really searching for that Lena. Man. I guess in some ways you're probably thinking about it like we've we've shut this, like it's important to shut down some stuff. They can't find the Lena, they'll take Rage the Potato. Got to take the dual damage. Not what this does. That hero has almost 1,700 life with just treads and a wand yeah. at level 10. People uh, people vastly underestimate the tankiness of the Earthshaker, and that, oh, that's why I also see. love... Oh, oh, no, he's not... Wait, Wait no, okay, what, what the heck? He just, like, rubber banded off the map <laughs> and back in. <laughs> CC is the rubber band man. I, I think normally what happens when you do that is you just... You kind of go off the map and then you come back somewhere else, but he just straight up went straight back to where he, he was standing before. Yeah. Really? Like, he should have ended up in that cubby hole, right? Yeah, that's what but I thought as well. He's just like, nope, leap over these trees. That was definitely awkward, but Ward's dropped here and Roche should be pretty easy for him to this one. I mean, they just killed your Shaker again, they know. Especially since he was showing him it. Desperately need that. Desperately need Nando's Blink Dagger, too, because they need that one-two punch. God, Kaka has his Blink before the Shaker has his. That is... That does not feel good if you're an off-lane player to see a support get a Blink before you. Yeah. I mean, they they obviously will see it if they check bottom, but, you know, Kaka is sitting in Sandstorm now, so who knows if they have the information yet or not. Okay, now they will for sure. They just blinked away. Shadow Blade for James. How do you how do you read the difference in these uh, Linus builds? When do you go Bloodstone first? When do you go Yules first? When do you go? Ch I think that you get Bloodstone whenever you're doing well enough in the game to warrant buying the item. But since they're behind, they're they're just looking for kills more than anything else. And I guess they we can miss that one. Yeah. Duel. Okay. Oh, Echo okay. Slam. Maybe they can actually win this duel. It's gonna be close. That ends out. Laguna Blades will manage to get the kill. James hides in the trees, dodges the Star Storm, buys himself a little bit more time. He'll die to the Sacred Arrow. Lumic. Oh, a big crit. Almost lost his life there from that one. Meanwhile, Nando picked up his Blink Dagger in the side shop and managed to kill Faith at top lane. So that's a huge turn for Execration. This was looking real dark and gloomy, but their first reveal of the Blink Dagger is on point. That Echo came in huge. I mean, they, they lost Alina, sure, but given the advantage that Newbie has at this point in time, it's always beneficial to be able to get fights uh -oh, like that. Nando, Nando is dead. Yeah, he is. That is a diffuse of Blade Maron. Many, many damage. But as far as the Alina build that we were talking about a bit earlier, I think it's nice when you have Nyx on your team, because you can walk together as two. And if there's no sentry, that hero is 100% dead. Like, Volvendetta combo, and then you have the Laguna as well to follow it up. A lot of nukes. How does Newbie respond to that? Now that they know, now they know Blink Dagger's up, they've also seen the Shadow Blade. Uh, do you just group up a bunch? I think it's probably 
when you have book three, why not? You know, you have Aegis on Moogie, you have Necro three, you can walk into a tower, pop it. You get the, the building for more or less free. They're gonna find another pickoff. This time it's gonna be on S C and top. So the Shadow Blade once again coming in for its usefulness. Uh Nando? What? Uh Nando? Well, that. well he's got the enrage, so he can survive for a long time, but they do have the global silence as well. So there's the initiation. They managed to kill Kaka. Mogi's in a bad position too. They're gonna be able to get stunned, though with the duel onto Rage of Potato with the help of the Necronomicons, they are gonna be able to get that kill, but Mookie's now fast enough to stay ahead of Nando, so he could just throw all of his Necronomicons with the wolf straight at that uh, that bear. And it is gonna be Execration losing that fight pretty badly. Two for two for trade-off. Well, I guess it's two for one. Uh, it was James. Yep. Yeah. Happened a little while ago. Still, though, newbie, once again, flexing their muscles. They had everything there. I mean, you drop the wards, you pop the necro, the tower is pretty much dead at that point. Yeah. And they, they pretty much just global because Nando was a little bit far out and they wanted to try to bail him out of that bad situation and, uh, and the tower for it. It's, it's tricky playing against Shadow Shaman, I think, when you have Execrations type of lineup because global doesn't really help if the wards are already down, right? So you need to like kill the Shadow Shaman or something before the wards are dropped to really have that spell be any real use, I think. Or you just global in reaction to seeing a duel. Those are like the two best points I can possibly think of to use the ultimate in this game. So maybe the silence are not really working out quite to the effect that they want it to, but there's there's still some opportunities having the Blink Dagger on the Shaker, having the, the Shadow Blade and the Vendetta combo of the Nyx. They just need to try to buy some time and open up the map a bit. Lumic. You can leave with the stun that will follow up with the LSA, and they will kill. Oh, not! Kaka actually stops Laguna Blade, and now they get the dual follow up, so James is dead, especially with that Blade Mail to get the chains on a Lumic as well. What a turnaround. Quick that's, reactions for newbie. That's a real cool spell. But I mean, they're doing the stuff that I think their team needs to do. So when you make that type of move and you get counter ganked, you, you feel bad about it. But the, the fact of the matter is the decision making is still correct. Like you need to go for those plays because if newbie are able to walk up to your tower as they're doing right now and they drop wards or they pop necro, you don't really want to engage that anymore. You kind of just want to let it go. You want to push somewhere else because you're fighting into newbie's strongest point when they have the siege going. Are they keeping the wards uh, I think so. It's level two wards, so I don't wow, see why they not. They really are. Yeah, they got the leap attack speed buff. They're dropping the boards. There is Echo and Global up, but Boogie's still got Aegis. They just killed that tower so quickly. The leader's only just now coming up. The tier 3 is gone. Nubia gonna keep going though, especially with the arrow on the Lumic. Nando makes his initiation on SCC. The Global Silence is there, but he already had the Diffuse Blade onto Nando, so he wasn't really able to follow that one. Now gonna be stunned up thanks to a Fisher. He will be released and heads to the shrine. Mookie's gonna end up dying. That's just the Aegis though. Good epicenter there from Kaka. Gets a lot of damage on Execration, even if it doesn't kill anybody. The follow up looks like might be able to kill Rage of Potato. KB actually grabs James instead. That's a bigger kill, and he still managed to get through dual damage out. Rage Potato does manage to get his Echo Slam down, but it's only a little bit of damage. Newbie are so damn tanky. Fortunately, Nando will manage to come in and pick up at least one kill. That's on Kaka, but Newbie, the rest of them, all three of the cores, they managed to run themselves away after taking that mid lane of Rax. Brutal, Huge savage, wrecked. The momentum that Newbie have gotten in the last 10 minutes is just crazy. They just keep getting the better engagements. I mean, their team, like we talk about, when you get the concave, and what I mean by that is, if you're sitting around the tower as five heroes and you have time to set up with a Shadow Shaman, have, you know, Kaka sitting in the back on his Sand King, if Newbie gets to that point, Execration just simply cannot contest them anymore. They don't have the heroes. So what they do is they take Lumic, they take, uh, they take James, they walk out on the map, they try to find a kill. And unfortunately, when they did that, even though that's what the team is supposed to be doing, they got picked. And then once the pick happens, you're fighting a, a, a 3v5 into right. Newbie's strongest point. You know, it's, it's just getting more and more difficult because now it's a 16k net worth lead in a 22 minute game. That is crazy. Newbie are up by so much, and there really isn't too many comeback mechanisms for uh, Execration. It's just gotta, just gotta be... gotta win a fight. Yeah, it's gotta be a good fight that's really... That's what their team does best. Because it's not as if Newbie don't have pickoff potential. That's one of the great things about Legion. Like, look at KP's items. He's got Shadow Blade, Blink, Blade Mail. This is the, the trifecta of anyone who shows in the map that doesn't have a Lincolns is just dead. He's got a lot of dual damage, too. Yeah. So even just his right 
it's one of the reasons why I think that Legion is super strong, because if someone picks, like, this greedy support, like a Silencer, who doesn't really offer a ton of, like, lane influence, you just get such an easy lane, and then you get your items quickly, you get a little bit of dual damage, and then you're threatening, like, what other off lanes can just solo kill cores on command besides, like, an Axe? And I would say that Axe's laning phase in some situations can even be weaker than Legion's. So, did, did you say Aghanim's on, uh, Shadow Chum? Oh, yeah, as an Aghanim? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I was just clicked over field. I was like, oh wow. That's a that's a huge item. <laughs> that is yeah, that's insane. And it's gonna be super tough for execution to defend. Like Agnes once scores, there's the duel on to James again. He keeps on fighting that initiation. They are gonna be able to kill KP though. This time around, James will survive. Even if their tier three does not. Here comes the epicenter though. Oh! Kaka actually stopped it. He blinks a little bit too early. Arrow nails Nando. Giving Newbie the time to be able to take that full lane. Still sticking around, thinking maybe they can fight. But yeah, it's greedy. Greedy, greedy Newbie. Take the lane, be happy. Run back and farm some more. They're at a commanding lead at the, this point in yeah. time. There's not really a whole heck of a lot that Execration can do besides go for a smoke and, and pray. But this is the, the other part that kind of hurts Execration is because they have just... They have Alina for wave clear, and I guess Shaker like can kind of kill creeps, but they don't have anything that's constantly applying that pressure. Arrow gonna land there on James, but no detection. We'll see. Well, they do have a tier two in the top lane, so it'll be a little while before Nukebi can really land the final blow. Oh, a leap there from SCC. Nando actually catches him inside the pit, but there's all the stuns coming out from Newbie. They're going to be able to kill Kaka. So, one for one trade up, but obviously much more big for Newbie. And a duel on the James. Makes it that much worse for Execration. Newbie looking to be on good form today so far. Man, that, that kill on uh, Nando was worth 279 gold. Oh, they go for the Echo Slam here on Moogie, but they just don't have enough damage. Not even close. Tries to drop the Fisher, but Faith is there to be able to stop them, and they're just going to run over these heroes. James is back already, but uh, can't actually have a whole lot of influence without his little good blades. So we are still going to be able to fight, chase away Execration, take that chance too. See if they push for more. They Why got not? more words. This is just so hard. Makes his jump in, but not before KP makes his own jump once again on James. He just can't deal with it. He calls it. He calls it GG. He knows that fight's already over, but I'm sure a lot of that is frustration as well. KP just had his number every single time, and especially once he got that blink blade mail. It was just all over James every time. I don't know. I look at this game, and I think... The Silencer was a really cool idea. I want to say that Execration picked it third, and it just, I did not feel it at all. I think what they wanted was these kind of two heroes roaming around the map, finding picks. You know, you use Global when you see Duel come out and stuff like that, and on paper it all sounds great, but man, their bottom lane didn't go well. Raging Potato died a ton in the off lane. Like, he was just getting focus fired yeah. by Newbie this game, just getting caught out all over the map. His blink was so late that by the time he got it, it just didn't really feel like it was enough. And even though James had a great lane, you know, he did very well against SCCC mid. It's just too much weight. Like, you you can't do it all on your own. You need some kind of cohesion and, and to win some actual fights. And it just felt like in first and second game, the newbie were just... They were outclassing them and fighting maneuverability. Almost every single thing, I think, that newbie just did better. Yep. Newbie seemed to be on a whole nother level compared to Execration, at least in this series. We'll uh, follow more of Execration. We're actually going to be covering one of their games, uh, the very last series of the day versus IG. So hopefully they have a better plan of attack. But for now, we're going to get out of this series and go to TNC versus Team Empire. See you soon.